right now I'm primarily looking at ways to engage students with online learning, um, especially in MOOCs where we know there's a large percentage of students that begin and never finish MOOCs. And overall, even though I don't think it's a huge problem that not everyone finishes, of course, everybody would like more students to be engaged in completing things. So I'm looking at it from a kind of large data standpoint, what are the variables that can affect whether students engage with material or not? And looking at both demographic data, um, but also looking at things we can manipulate, um, such as issues in goal setting, um, having students set their goals before they start a MOOC and whether that helps them to maintain kind of work that's on track um, or statements of belonging, um, you know, making students feel like they're in the right place to do and accomplish what they want to do. So, um, of course, MOOCs provide massive amounts of data, so it's a, a lot of sorting things out. And I'm collaborating with a group at University of Adelaide, um, and we're kind of combining data, and so it's getting even more massive. The developments I see primarily are um, the ability to aggregate even more data and really look across a number of different classes um, to see what kinds of ways we can manipulate uh, our courses in a way to make them like even more engaging and interesting um, and uh, to kind of see how students um, might be brought to kind of understand Kind of the value of these online courses that are largely seen as kind of, I call it the um, the sports club kind of effect, um, just signing up for large amounts of um, extra activities without really the extra time in one schedule to commit to them. So um, just trying to uh, find ways to break courses down into smaller pieces and more manageable goals for students. Well, at my university, we have a really large population of Chinese learners. Um, and of course, that's part of the history of the region I come from, is we've always had a lot of Chinese. Um, and I would say one of the largest ways that it's impacted us is uh, the kind of expectations that teachers have had about um, you know, this stereotypical quiet student, which of course we find not to be the case at all. And so um, we've found that uh, teachers really have to um, adjust in ways that allow um, students to speak more, um, even though it's a writing class. The value of spoken language and formal speeches, presentations, uh, poster sessions. Um, we're integrating um, a lot more kind of multimodal and audiovisual material that supports all aspects um, of language learning. It used to be really focused on kind of written word and grammar, and um, I think that's really expanded with. The, I think what we see is the increasing quality of students that we've seen over the past decade or so.